think it's really important to capture the learning and those experiences and knowing what positive relationships look like right from an early stage. Owing to the launch of the RSHP Sex Education Materials this week, uh, they were launched as a special event at the Scottish Learning Festival. That's the annual educational fair conference type thing uh, in Glasgow. So I went along with a ticket for the launch of these appalling sex ed materials. And it was pretty dull, to be honest. They just speak in very bland language. They make it all sound very innocuous. Um, they shared some videos as well, uh, defending the materials and trying to promote them. I'll come on to those later. Uh, there were no questions allowed at the end of it, no opportunity for questions at all. I actually went up and spoke to a lady from Education Scotland after the event. I said, oh, you know, I've taken an interest in the resources. I said, I'm quite horrified by some of them. Um, I, I just picked one of the many examples I could have chosen. And I mentioned the so the uh, the recommendation of mature pornography and the illustration of someone have sex with someone uh, with a Zimmer frame. And the lady from Education Scotland replied by saying, well, they've been approved by many people. So I said, okay, so what you're saying is Education Scotland does agree that that's suitable material to show to young people. Yes, she said. Okay, uh, Nikki Koya was there, uh, our friend from our previous video in the sort of heavy metal band with a satanic anti-Christian imagery. Um, so I went up to him to, uh, to see what he had to say. He obviously recognized me and said he had nothing to say to me uh, at all. Okay, fair enough. Uh, at the end of the event, they took a photo. All the staff that were there that had been involved in the RS. HP project stood by that little banner. Uh, you know, here's the photograph and had a photograph taken. Uh, I just held my phone up as well and took a photograph of it as well. I was walking along a corridor later in the day and a woman came up to me and she said, you took a photograph of me. I said, what? I don't know what you're talking about. She said, you took a photograph of me. You took a photograph of me without permission. I was thinking, I mean, what's going on here? It sounds like she's thinking someone's you know, upskirted her or something. This is a mistaken identity. Then eventually, she said in that seminar, the RSHP seminar, I thought, ah, it dawned on me. She was in the group posing for a photograph. When I took a photograph of the group posing for a photograph, she said, you haven't got permission to use that photograph. I said, okay, well, whatever. Then another woman came up and said, me too, you don't have permission to use my photograph. So I've uh, blanked out their faces in the photograph. I mean, to be honest, if I'd been involved in this project as well, I would be embarrassed to have my photograph taken and be publicly associated with it. So after the launch event, I went over to the Education Scotland stall in the uh, the fair area. And I, I, I got on my phone, I, I just took the same image of the person having sex with someone in the Zimmer frame. And I went up to a lady there, Education Scotland, member of staff, and said, oh, you know, I've just seen this. Let me just clarify that this is the sort of thing Education Scotland thinks is suitable to show to young people in schools. And she said, oh, I, I, can't really say it. It's not for me to say. I said, well, you know, you're here at the Education Scotland stand. And then she said, well, do you think people don't do that? Referring to the image on the screen. So in other words, the fact that something might happen is justification for Education Scotland to promote forms of pornography based on it to young people. Anyways, she then snapped back into, oh, I can't say mode. I said, is there anyone here who can say? Is there anyone who could give me a view on it? Uh, no, no, there's not. Then she said, you're being intimidating. This is completely ridiculous. Uh, uh, absolute madness. But anyway, so, so I left that and uh, on I went. Now, the next day, someone else went along as well. I didn't go, but someone else went along, um, raising the RSHP resources, expressing concerns to various uh, people at the stalls, councils, unions, Education Scotland again, uh, GTCS. Now, it's interesting. Uh, this person went to the General Teaching Council for Scotland stall and showed them some of the images from the resources. And the person at GTCS Scotland said, I'm sure lots of teachers would refuse to teach that. But unfortunately, I'm sure that member of staff was speaking entirely off the cuff. And if it came to an official response, that would not be it. The response would be, get on with it. Now, many of the councils and charities that this other person spoke to uh, wouldn't believe that they were the official resources from the government. So the person had to show them on the phone, as I've had to do so many times. You have to click through and say, look, here it is, Education Scotland, Scottish Government, here are the images, that's it. And many of the people were very shocked, but where will that go? It won't go anywhere, I would guess. It would be like the, the inset effect I used to say about when I was teaching. I sometimes go on a course and the person would be speaking away, leading the course, giving a certain perspective. 
I might put my hand up at some point and say, well, I don't quite see it like that. Maybe that's a little unbalanced or whatever. And then there'd be this uncomfortable, horrified silence that a heretic had spoken out. Then the person leading the course would sort of be shocked and say, oh, 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 oh well, I, I can see what you're saying, but I, I wouldn't disagree with that. But And then they'd carry on with exactly what they were saying, completely unbalanced, and on it would go. Um, during that whole process, in the room, no one, would express any support. Everyone would just sit there with their head down, a bit uncomfortable. Then we get to break down, have a cup of tea, go to the gents, and people would say, oh, you're quite right. You tell them, oh, it's a lot of nonsense, isn't it? I'm oh, really glad you said that. I completely agree with you. Then you go into the second half, and what happens? Uh, you do the same again, and again, everyone's just head down, making their notes, nodding their head. No one will say a thing. So I'd imagine that will probably be the effect that will take over. I did detect from Education Scotland in my conversations and with the conversations another person had with them that they were sort of trying to back off a little bit. They were saying, oh, we were only advisors. We were only facilitators in these materials. I didn't say that in the original things. They were just listed in the organisations producing them. But whether advisors or not, they've approved them and they're promoting them. So no excuses. Right, going back to the story of the other person who went around uh, raising these issues with people, showing them images from them. Eventually, an Education of Scotland representative and a security person came up and said, if you carry on speaking to people about the RSHP resources, we'll have to ask you to leave. In other words, if you question our educational philosophy, we'll kick you out. Okay, let's go on to some of the videos that they've shown and are now available to promote these materials in schools. And the first one's with our old friend, Nikki Koya. Everyone has the right to explore their sexuality and express it and to experience consensual, safe, healthy relationships, free from harm, free from stigma and free from shame. And Talks about healthy relationships. What it's really meaning is sex. When you're saying things are going to be safe, healthy and consensual, they're terms which apply to sex. But it calls it relationships to make it sound more uh, innocuous. And it's got the right to have sex uh, without harm. So somehow or other, the dangers of some of the sexual practices, etc., and the emotional harms of early and promiscuous sex, somehow or other, young people have got the right to be free from them. I'm not sure how that's supposed to happen. The right to be free from stigma. So if a young person, for example, has been very promiscuous, if anyone expresses disapproval of that, that would be causing stigma. So you shouldn't express disapproval. You have to approve of everything, according to Nikki. And people have got the right to be free of shame. In other words, the right to be free of guilt. So when their own conscience says, this is not right, it, by some bizarre logic and some unknown mysterious mechanism, they have the right to be free from guilt in their own thoughts. I really don't know how that works. Anyway. If we really want young people to be safe, to be nurtured, to be healthy, to be respected, to be included, then we need to tell pupils that porn is great and to endorse any and every sexual practice and induct them into LGBT political activism, according to Nikki. Us as parents quite often just say, oh, you know, it's, it's your willy, oh, it's your front bottom. And actually, children need to know the correct names for these things to protect themselves. How does knowing these names protect children? That's not at all clear. When we spoke with the young people, they felt that some of the materials were outdated and that they wanted a modern and um, progressive program that reflected equality and diversity. Wow, that's amazing. The children want exactly what the adults want. They even express it in the adults' language. Isn't it wonderful the way educationalists in Scotland listen to children uh, once they've told them what to say? We don't receive this education at home. I definitely prefer to learn it in school. It stops the awkward conversations you can sometimes have with parents and it just is a lot more comfortable. So, for example, talking about licking the anus might be embarrassing for parents. That's because a lot of parents have a proper sense of decency. And, for example, a young boy staring at a picture of a woman's genitals uh, should feel a degree of embarrassment. That's a healthy thing. Uh, it's something that says that you shouldn't actually be doing that. And we need to trust our teachers to protect our children. and. Yes, we should be able to do that, but we can't because teachers are presenting a dangerous ideology of sex, sexuality and gender. Essentially, it is about being open and transparent with parents and family members. This is not about actually providing young children with inappropriate information before an age and stage where they're able to understand what that information means. 
but that's absolutely what it's about. I mean, for example, look at the garbled incoherent gibberish they teach in primary school about sexuality. And on the other hand, things like promoting bondage. What's the right age to promote bondage? Uh, never. We also accept uh, that some teachers find RSHPE a, a, a difficult or a challenge area, it may be out of a comfort zone, it may be touching on particular themes that they have their own personal views around. That's quite correct and people should be embarrassed to discuss wildly inappropriate content. Now when it comes to people's own views, they're probably, what they mean by that is, sort of decent values, a sense of morality and their solution to teachers who have a higher moral standard is to offer them more training. When you talk about sexual health, there does tend to be a knee-jerk response that some people will go, well, I'm not comfortable with that, or no, we can't possibly talk about sex. Straw man alert, no one is saying don't talk about sex. The question is how you talk about sex. Because if we don't talk about it and if we don't normalise it, where are our children getting the information from? So normalise it, yeah, normalise underage sex, anal sex, porn, bondage. If you don't normalise it, they might actually develop a proper healthy aversion to these things. That's why we need to have the parents' evening, we need to share it openly. You want to share openly with parents? That's great. You can count on us to support you in that project. We will help by continuing to show people what is actually in the resources. I feel my responsibilities are to ensure that all the parents understand what it is that we are teaching their children. Ah, Dean Park Primary School, that's just up the road from me. Maybe we can help with this informing parents by giving out some of our leaflets at the school gates. We'll see. My role is to make sure that all teachers in Scotland who have responsibility for health and wellbeing are aware of the resource and want to use it. Ah, so Education Scotland, who's sort of trying to distance themselves from this a little bit when they're put on the spot, but they want all teachers to be using these resources. We've had to um, consider different faith backgrounds. Yes, they considered these religious perspectives and then completely rejected them and decided to ride roughshod over every moral teaching that they hold. We also want to develop a resource that can be delivered in all schools, both denominational and non-denominational. So it's suitable for Catholic schools. Let's see how that went. The most important thing RSHP does for young people is it gives them a voice. How exactly does it give a voice to young people? It doesn't. This is about content that's been taught. But this is Scottish education. It just buzzwords. If you put in children's voice, everyone will agree and give you a pat on the back. It equips them to develop relationships, having an understanding of what's appropriate and what's not. What's appropriate and what's not? It actually does the opposite. All young people from 3 to 18 have an entitlement to good quality RSHP education. Again here, throw in a buzzword, entitlement, but it's actually saying nothing. Uh, is Ty's delivering a message there? It is about everyone and it is about the community and it's not just actually about the children. I've learned things looking at the resources. Oh, me too. I learned things through looking at these resources that frankly I didn't really want to know and I'd be happy to forget. Like the names of various types of perverted pornography, for example. And it's actually not as scary as quite a lot of parents think. I think we'll let parents be the judge of that. Relationships in all forms are inevitable and young people will form relationships, so learning about how to build appropriate relationships is crucial. Well, that all sounds pretty innocuous, but to be honest, I'm not sure that outfit's appropriate for teaching in a school. Our SHP matters because we need to be able to make informed decisions about our relationships. So bang on message again in the adult's language. Make informed decisions? No. Because there's no communication of the value of marriage and the statistics related to marriage and relationship stability. There's no information about the consequences in the longer term of early and promiscuous sex. And it doesn't pass on the vital information that basically the first time you have sex with someone, the bonding effect of that experience is the strongest. And the more people you have sex with, the less effective that bonding effect is. So the less likely you are to be in a stable lifelong relationship. And that's a very, very important factor in your lifelong well-being. So to conclude, what we've got here is the Relationship, Sexual Health and Parenthood Education team in PR mode. And they're trying to present things in the most bland and innocuous language. But it's our job to make people aware of what's really going on and what the content actually is. Once we make people aware, we don't really need to explain what's wrong with it. People's natural sense of decency and morality enables them to see what's wrong. Okay, this corruption of children and young people in Scotland is a political issue. This is the SNP 
government enacting it and there's no opposition to it in the Scottish Parliament. If you want to join the fight back, then join the Scottish Family Party right now. There's a link with this video. Thanks for watching.